now open the veterinary vendors if it's not open. We're in the data sheet view. And I just want to show you, you can make additional changes to the database very simply. For example, let's um, click on 320 West Haven, uh, our number two ID for Gaines Vet Supplies. Put your mouse after Haven. Let me search this out just for a second. And we forgot to type in Boulevard. So a lot of times you won't find out information until the, pay, the customer comes in a second time. And now after I hit enter here, I wanna make sure street address is easily viewable. So double click, lay your mouse right between street address and city and double click. If you remember what that does in Excel, it does something called best fit. So that way all the words are showing right there. We also have everything over here still set to product type VAC because we did an update query with mass changes. So let's make a couple little changes. Let's go to number three, May Supply, and let's drop this down. May Supply is actually MC for microchip. And let's change Surgical Supplies next to the product type for number four, Rodriguez Vet Supplies, and make that, of course, Supplies. So let's go ahead and close that table. Next, after we close that table, and we'll save those changes, Let's open up the appointments table and let's click on, in this case, uh, the treatment number. Notice the very first one is T3. Uh, I want you to open in your online book, figure 3-54, and let me add, it should be T3 and T10 is what that first appointment was doing. The second appointment is T has T4, but also should be T7 and T14. And these are those multi-valued fields that we set. By the way, appointment number three is still gonna be just T2. Appointment number four is gonna be T1 and T8. And then the last appointment is gonna be T4 and T7 is what that table says. So now we can get all of that set up and it should look like this when you're done. Uh, let's click that save button to save those changes and go ahead and close that appointments table. Moving along, you can also change the appearance of your data sheet in a variety of ways. So let's double click on veterinarian vendors and let me kind of scroll over here to show you something. You know, if these are the total amounts, it seems to me that would be quite important to maybe, you know, add them all together at some point in time. So if I wanted to do that on the home tab, home ribbon in the records tab, let's click totals. Remember this from Excel, it looks like auto sum. So I click totals and I don't know if you know it, but it just did this new blank row just showed up down here. Let's come over underneath total amount and click there. Notice because we click totals here, we now have this drop down arrow and we can do things like sum and average and count. Let's just set the sum and notice if we add all these together, we'd get 1670. And if not, we could um, do other mathematical items here like average and so forth. But if I wanna remove that, I can just click totals again and that whole column goes away. So kind of neat and easy to put those items together there. We can also add some grid lines. And to add some grid lines on the Home tab, I want you to, what we're gonna do here is click right in the corner. This is called the Data Sheet Selector. Do you see this little square? And what will show up is these text formatting items. For example, this one right here has, is called Grid Lines. And so now let's say we just wanna put horizontal grid lines in. We can easily do that. Let me click off of it and you'll see it just put some lines in between. And we can also change the colors in this sheet. Let's go back there and select everything again. And I'm now gonna to go to the colors right here. I'm gonna go with this, it's called brown. To me it looks a, you know, a little bit orange. But now I can pick brown in the upper right corner of the standard colors to select brown as our alternate color. And then I could pick the font color right here. 
and go with dark blue. And then I could come here to the fonts and I'm gonna select in this one Bodini. So B-O-D-O-N-I. So let me go find that one. I want the one that's just called Bod Bodini MT, not black. And then last but least, let me go ahead and change the font size to 10. So do wanna show you that you can make all of those changes. So um, let's close that up. Now we've never queried those multiple values, you know, the ones with T1, T2. So let me go to the Create tab, create a regular query, query design. And what I wanna do here is add appointments. I'll stretch it out so you can see it. And let's double click appointment ID, patient ID, appointment date, and just regular old treatment number. If I were to run it right now, it would show me that during my first appointment with patient F1, I think that was fluffy, <laughs> on June 30th, we're gonna do these two treatments. Let's save that so far and call it, in this case, we wanna call it M03 for module three, Q01, save it. But I also want to make a change. Let me now go back to design view. And what we wanna do here is switch, drop this down. Do you remember how everything appeared like that one appointment had those two or three treatments? If I drop this last item called treatment number down to treatment number dot value, let me show you how it's different. I click run and now what it does, it says, look at these two rows right here. These first two rows say that appointment one is, it's listed twice because I'm gonna do at the beginning of the appointment a T3 treatment and then a T10. Here is all what I'm gonna do during appointment two. I'm gonna do these three treatments. You get the idea how they're now spread out. So now if I wanna save that as is, I can say, um, do you want to save the changes? But yeah, I want to now save this one as query two. So I want two of these, by the way. I want one called query one two, 101 and then query 02. So now we'll have both of those. Now I'd like you to open the appointments and treatments. It should be under queries. And it will say it's not valid. What I'm gonna do is go into design view. The reason that it's not is we did make this a multi-valued and we need to go make it go back uh, to the old way. So we're gonna click on this little join line in between and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And we're gonna join that treatment number value field in the appointments to the treatment number in the other field. So what we're gonna do right here is, we're gonna take this field and join it to this one up here instead. Uh, what this will do is we wanna connect the individual fields. We'll run this query real quick, all is well, and we just close that query and save it, yes. So with the same name. Now on to the big item of the entire class. This is like one of the biggest things to understand in databases, and I wanna make sure you get it. It's called referential integrity. Here's the concept. Um, my last year that I was at University of Virginia, I got married. And so my name went from Corinne Hoisington to Corinne Hoisington Terrell. Well, when I tried to graduate, I asked for Corinne Terrell's credits and they said I only went there one semester. And I asked for Corinne Hoisington's credits and they said she was one semester short and I explained that I was the same person and tried to graduate. You would think that's very simple to add, you know, I just changed names. It was not. They didn't have any way, because they didn't have databases yet, to kind of tie that everything was the same person. So let me talk about these relationships. We're gonna click on this database tools tab, which we've not been on the entire time. Click relationships. 
and it's going to ask me, well, what two items do you want to tie together? So I'm going to first come over here to tables and I want to double click on owners. Let me stretch that out so we can see it all. And then double click on patients. So now I'll close that little up so we can just look at these two items. I want to make sure that the computer allows that every owner has to have a unique ID and that way that if two patients try to do that same ID twice and each of those owners can actually have multiple pets. So let's pick up there. So referential integrity is going to be set up and create a relationship between these two tables and listen very carefully of why. I don't want you to just click buttons. <laughs> I want to make sure that if we have a new dog or a new cat come in to the vet that it doesn't get assigned no owner or the wrong owner. Because if that happens, then we, you know, we may give the dog or cat to the wrong owner or not know who to call. So here's what we're going to do. For two tables to have a relationship, first of all, they have to have one of the fields in common. And if you notice, this one has owner ID, this one has owner ID. One of those must be a primary key. Oh, there we go. Look at the little primary key. So let's say that again. Both the tables have to have something in common, and one of those things in common has to be the primary key. You always click on the one with the primary key, drag it on top of the other one with the same name. Now they're going to have a relationship. And we always check Enforce Referential Integrity and Cascade Update Related Fields. You say, why? We don't want to change to get made to the owner's information and not also get updated with the pet because they're kind of tied together, right? Now look at this, one to many right here. This is important. So for every one owner, that's this one part, one owner, they can have many pets. This relationship with other databases could be a one-to-one. -one. What's an example? Well, in the state of Virginia, when you get married, one person can only marry one other person at the same time. You cannot have two or three spouses. So this is true of one to many. Every one owner can have many, many, many pets if they'd like them. We hit the Create tab. And now look at this join relationship. And if you look real carefully, it's got a one right here, meaning one owner. And if you look at this little symbol, it means many. So one owner can have many, many, many patients. Now you think, okay, why did I just do that? Let's hit close right here. It says, do you want to save this relationship? Say, yes, I do. This was very, very powerful. And let me show you the effect of this referential integrity. So let's double click on the patients table. And in this patients table, let's look at Fluffy. Fluffy is a cat. It's a tabby cat. And right now, it's always been assigned to owner-1, O-1. Let's say we accidentally type in owner-111. <laughs> well, there is no owner-111, and now we're not going to know who Fluffy goes home with. Uh, we can't call every owner and say, hey, do you have this Fluffy feline? You know, that's not going to work. So when I hit enter right here, look at the message. It says you cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in owners. Here's what that means. There's not an owner called 111. Don't do this. And these things are really important. When I change my name at UVA, it should have updated all the records to be Corinne Hoisington Terrell and let me graduate. All the credits should have went with me. So now I can go back and make this go back to 001. Let's close patients and let me show you the most important thing that that relationship did. I'm going to now double click the owners table. Now, moments before I made the relationship, there were no plus signs in front of these, but now there are plus signs. Let me show you why these are so important. Let me go into Steven, one of our pet owners, click this little plus sign, and let me ex explain why this relationship is so cool. It now says Steven 
has two pets named Pepper and Paws, a dog and a cat. One's a Weimaraner. That's those really pretty gray dogs. I would love one of those. And there's a cat called a Calico Cat. So each one of these, if I just click this plus sign in front, I get these sub data sheets showing all the pets. By the way, look at Ted. Ted's got Ranger, Fluffy, Chloe, and Skippy. I mean, like a zoo. We call these sub data sheets because they're tied together. So here at CVCC, when a student takes classes, we can then click on their name and it shows all the classes and grades that you've taken. We've tied these tables together. Well, one of the last things we want to do right here is show you just simply how to change the order. So in this owner's table, let me just uh, click the minus signs to get everything back right here, uh, not to show the data sheet. Let's say I go under the owner, in this case, the owner city. So everybody click next to Dolores for where Ted lives. And what I want to do real quick here is come up to the sort and filter and just click ascending. If, since I have the owner city Dolores selected, it's going to sort these on the city. So let's see if, if Ted moves. So now Ted gets moved way down here, but do you notice they're now ordered? Bainbridge, Blanding, Devon, Dolores, Dolores, Dunning, Westover, and Winton. So now we could sort any which way. When we close the owners, um, we're gonna say no, because I don't want it saved in that sort, but you can. By the way, we're about to close now, so we can hit the X up in here. Guys, I know this has been a long section, but do a great job. Your test that's upcoming, let me give you a quick review for. It really has a lot more queries than anything else. I would say the state test that we all take the same of in Virginia is about 60% queries. So go back and watch the queries movie because there's almost one of every type. That's the most important. It will have referential integrity like we learned in this chapter. You'll create a small table. You'll do some data validation on the test uh, and run some queries. Make sure you know that for sure. Guys, have a great week. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you guys so much.